Hi learners, welcome to the chapter 11 of your textbook Sociology in Our Time, the sessions by Kendall. It's about families and intermate relationships. One of the greatest problems, one of the greatest issues in the whole history of human beings is family and family related problems and family issues. As in psychology and family therapy, the specialist, the expert says, family is everything so at first we have some questions for you to think deeper and more profoundly about the essence and existence of the family your family old family and family in different cultures and family in different countries how important your family in your daily life what are the major changes within the american family that have occurred within your lifetime what are some of the stressors that families face? It's a good question. We have a family life. At first, for example, sometimes in a period of your life, you are children, and after that, adolescents, and after that, adults, and after that, old age. Okay, these are the uh, life cycle of you, or life cycle of your personal life. Also, we have a family life cycle that we will talk about it and family life cycles have different stages and different changes in every, every stage. So, for example, uh, the first five years of your family uh, age of the five, year, five years of your parents married together is different, for example, uh, from the uh, fourth five years, the, five, the years between 15 and 20. It is family life cycle and family age. Chapter outline families in global perspective, theoretical perspectives on family, developing intimate relationships and establishing families, child related family issues and parenting, and transitions and problems in family. One of the greatest things you should know before reading and studying every chapters is chapter outlines. Why? Chapter outlines are the guidelines to detect the important concepts, the most significant concepts, definitions, matters, and objects in that chapter. Sometimes it is called learning objectives. So you should know chapter outline and highly recommend it to you for every chapter, for every course, until your end of your studying lifetime, until the time that you will study, and it is a lifelong process, lifelong education. At first, it is the outline, it is the objective. There will be the guidelines for studying. When you know the guideline, when you do the objectives, when you do the outlines of every chapter, of every book, of every educative material, it sharpen your intelligence to detect what is important and what is not important or what is less important. So please pay attention to the chapter outlines. We have one, two, three, four, five outlines here. Global perspective, theoretical perspective, intimate relations, tried related and transitions it is very very good guideline to study about the family like either chapters of this book at first we have eight questions the general and the total and the basic title is sociology and everyday life but each chapter based upon the main topic of that chapter we will talk about a very specific target, a very specific subject about sociology and everyday life. For example, in this chapter, we have some examples about diverse family landscapes in the 21st century. And we have eight questions, we have eight news, and you should say that it is true. How do you think it is true or false? One. Most U.S. adults view having a baby outside their marriage as morally wrong. Most 
U.S. adults view having a baby outside their marriage as morally wrong. You are not married, but you have children. A lot of people in America do you think it is morally wrong or not? It is moral, it is ethical, it is not too bad. It is false. A lot of Americans think that it is good, it is ethical, that you are not legally married, but you have children. Why not? Two, more than four in ten U.S. adults have at least one step relative in their family. Step mother, step father, step daughter, step son, and other things, step relative. More than four in ten, more than four, more than 40 percent, more than four in ten U.S. adults have at least one step relative in their family. Do you think this statistic is true or false? True. The percentage of children living with two parents, regardless of their marital status, differs by race and Hispanic origin. Is it true or false? The percent of children living with two parents, regardless of a marital status, differs by race and Hispanic origin. It is true. The birth rate among U.S. teenagers is much lower than the birth rate among teens in other Western industrialized countries. The birth rate among U.S. teenagers is much lower than the birth rate among teens in other Western industrialized country. It is true or false. It's false. It is not lower. Couples who cohabit before they get married are more likely to stay married. It's a, I don't know, it is a true belief or false belief. We will see at the end of this question, this uh, title, that it is true or false. But a lot of people think that if you have a, uh, lived together a for a long time before your legal marriage, it could be good and could be uh, could help you to be uh, to have a stable to a stable marriage. It is false belief. Stay-at-home parents have become less common since 1919s, when more two-paycheck families were established to help pay the bills. Stay-at-home parents have become less common since 1919s, when more two-paycheck families were established to help pay the bills. Two, uh, two paycheck families are the families that mother and father work separately and come their income and their salary to the box of the to the money box of the family. It is false. It is not true. Seven. The percentage of U.S. households that contain only one person has continued to increase since 1970s. The percent of U.S. households that contain only one person has continued to increase since 1970s. It is true or false. It is true. In the final part, among U.S. married couples, it is very rare for the wife to earn more money than the husband. It says that uh, we think that uh, husbands are always more money makers than uh, wives. Is it true or false? No, it is false. A lot of girls, a lot of women are more successful than men. A lot of wives are more successful than husbands. Okay. Families in global perspective. Families, what is the definition of family all around the world? Families are relationships in which People live together with commitment from an economic unit and care of any young and consider their identity to be significantly attached to the group. What are our key words? Families are relationships. Okay. The essence of family is relationship in which people live together. So live together is the second key word. With commitment is very important in family. Comment is very important. Commitment is very important in family. From an economic unit. So we have some economic share goals. We have some economic share meaning. And care for uh, care for any young. So caring is the next keyword. 
and consider their identity to be significantly attached to the group. So, in a global perspective, we have one, two, three, four, five keywords in definition of family. Families are relationships, one, in which people live together, two, with commitment, three, from an economic unit, four, care for any young, five, and consider the identity to be significantly attached to the group, attached identity. Okay. Now, what is kinship? Kinship refers to social network of people based on common ancestry, manage, manage, marriage, or adoption. So, at first we know that kinship is social network. It's a social, different people are here as the members of a network. Kinship refers to a social network of people based on common, common ancestry, marriage, or adoption. The family types. There are several types and we can divide family to several types. We can say about the several types of family in different aspects. For example, from the perspective of, from psychological perspective, biological perspective, racial perspective, ethnical perspective, here sociological perspective, and sometimes religious per perspective. We can divide and categorize and subcategorize the families, the types of family in different, by different perspectives. Here we are talking about sociology and it is very ordinary, very uh, logical that we are talking about the families from the perspective of sociology. The family of orientation is the family into which a person is born and in which early socialization usually take place. The main unit that you consider as family is the family of orientation or original family sometimes. It is called original family. Your father, your mother, your main caregiver, your main geographical space you have grown. The family of orientation is the family in which a person is born and in which early socialization usually take place. So, in definition of family of orientation, we have two keywords, born and socialization. But the family of procreation is the family that a person forms by having or adopting children. The family of procreation is the family that a person forms by having or adopting children, your secondary family. But the main topic in defining the family of procreation is adopting or having children. To have or not to have, to exist or not to exist of children in definition of family of procreation is very crucial, very basic, it's very important the main part of the meaning of defining the family of procreation is related to be as a child in the family or not as a child in the So at this categorization, we have two types, family of orientation, family of procreation. Family of orientation has two keywords, to be born and second one, socialization. But for family of procreation, to have children or adopt children is very important. An existent family, it's, it's very regular just now, we can see this type, these several types of family in different countries. Also in America, in different states, we have different cultures of organizing family as an extended family and nuclear family. Also a lot of families just now are nuclear family. An extended family is a family unit composed of relatives in addition to parents and children who live in the same household. Your uncle, your aunt, your other relatives in the same household. Mm, it's regularly really great houses, 
and with different rooms with different parts with the same household this is the unique says uh, household that a lot of relatives in addition to your parents in addition to your sibling in addition to uh, children are living there together and, and it is extended family um, it is not so popular now all around the world in a lot of countries this type of family has been destroyed especially in, in industrialized parts of uh, developing countries and especially in developed countries in a lot of states in a lot of cities a lot of provinces a lot of countries you cannot see a lot of extended families but it's a very basic old pattern an extended family is a family unit so it is one unit composed of relatives in addition to parents and children who live in the same household so we have three keywords here in definition of extended family it is a unit one unit we have relatives and we have same in the same household a nuclear family your family regularly just now is nuclear family a nuclear family is a family composed of one or two parents and their dependent children all of whom live apart from other relatives we are not at the same household in the same and the one single house we have different parts uh, as a nuclear family you your sibling your parents only this not other relatives not grandpa not grandma not aunt not uncle and 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 a nuclear family is a family composed of one or two parents and their dependent children why because uh, we are talking about one or two parents we will talk about it in the uh, other parts that uh, sometimes uh, the second and remarriage and in the second parts yes we can see for example two types of parents two groups of parents but only one or two parents and their dependent children all of whom live in more part from other relatives this is a part not the same household well such a basic concepts we are defining in this chapter some concepts that usually we think it is not necessary to define and redefine them but now we can see that uh oh there are very little and very detailed differences when we want to define them it is not so easy so it is not very absolute definitions which is relative definitions and not everybody but every aspect and every uh, perspective of human sciences can give us different definitions so in every aspect in every approach like psychology like sociology like legal science law and other parts we should have that single and the same definition from that aspect again one of them is marriage what is marriage it's a very simple question very hard defined and not always well defined uh, concept and uh, definition marriage is a legally recognized and or socially approved arrangement between two or more individuals that carries center rights and obligations and usually involves sexual activities at first it is legally recognized so when you are talking about marriage you are talking about law legally recognized if it is not legally it is not registered it is not marriage it is relationship it is partnership it is friendship everything you can call it except of marriage at first marriage is legally recognized second it should be approved by society and socially approved but and or it is good but not necessary and or in some societies it should be socially acceptable socially approved sometimes it is good 
to be approved or not. Between two or more individuals that carry certain rights. When you are talking about the legally recognized, you are talking about the rights and obligations, especially in the economic issues, especially in the future-oriented problems, especially about parenting, about children, about the uh, financial issues, usually involves, uh, involves sexual activity. Sometimes, in some countries, in some cultures, the first thing come to our mind when we are talking about marriage is sexual relationships. But in modern countries, it's not the first thing, yes a very biological base of marriage is sexual activity but it is not the first ranking why because you can have a very good sexual relationship with your partner with no marriage for a long time even you can have children but that marriage marriage is legally recognized legally registered with rights and obligation and socially and finally, yes, they have, they should have sexual activity. Such a good definition of marriage we have here. It's very comprehensive definition of marriage. Marriage is a legally recognized and or socially approved arrangement between two or more individuals that carries certain rights and obligations and usually involves sexual activity. Monogamy and polygamy it is a, a derived is the, these phrases are derived from biology and sometimes it is from neuropsychology biological psychology but it is very common just now monogamy is a marriage between two partners usually a woman and a man it is monogamy polygamy is the concrete marriage of a person <coughs> of one sex with two or more members of the opposite sex. So what are the keywords? In monogamy, we have a marriage between two partners, only two, and usually opposite sex, one man and one woman. Uh, at first, you should know about two words. We have homosex and heterosex. The same sex is called homosex opposite sex it is heterosex a man and a woman it is heterosex a man and a man and a woman and a woman is homosex so monogamy is usually heterosexual a woman and a man but the keyword is two partners only two partners but in polygamy we have one person with more than one with more than one partner one person with for example two partners one person with three partners usually ordinary it is one man and with for example two or three or more than three women it is usually but it is not rare for one woman with more than one man it is polygyny and polyandry polygyny in one man and multiple women which has been practice is a number of societies including parts of Europe until the Middle Ages one man for example two wives three wives four wives they it is a part of sometimes not only sexually it is sometimes legally and in some countries it is just now legally to have more than one wife for uh, men but uh, it has legally a lot of rights and obligations Polyandry is not very usual, very not ordinary, but it's a categorization. One woman with multiple men. It is typically found in society where men greatly outnumber women because of high rates of female infanticide. A lot of female infanticide, we have uh, a number of less women in that society, but it is not so common. So, in polygamy, we have the, some keywords. At first, concurrent marriage. It is not a marriage, it is concurrent marriage. One person, more than one partner. One person, 
with more than one partner. And two subcategorization, polygyny and polyandry. Polygyny, one man with more than one woman. Marriage of one man with more than one woman. And rarely poly polyandry, one woman with more than one man. So monogamy, polygamy, polygyny, and polyandry. And patrilineal descent and matrilineal descent and bilateral descent. Patrilineal descent, patri is related to father. And matrilineal, it is matri is every time, everywhere you see patri and matri, patri or petri is related to father, matri or matri is related to mother. Patrilineal descent is a system of tracing descent to the father's side of the family. For example, what is your descent? My descent is my father's family descent. And matrilineal descent is a system of tracing descent to the mother's side of the family. Everywhere the name of the, in, if you can see in a country that the name of the children are related to the father's, father's family, like my country, like in America, it is patrilineal descent. A matrilineal descent, if the name, uh, if the trace of uh, descent, tracing descent is related to the mother's family members and mother's family name, mother's side of the family, it is related to the matrilineal. And bilateral is a system of tracing descent through both the mother's and the father's side of the family. It is two sides. Bilateral is mean bilateral is mean two sides. So for descent tracing. We have three options. We have three categorization. One, patrilineal descent. Two, matrilineal descent. And three, bilateral descent. In patrilineal descent, it is related to the father's side of the family. In matrilineal descent, tracing a descent uh, through the mother's side of the family. And in bilateral descent, we have uh, tracing descent through the both mother's and father's side of the family. And patriarchal and matriarchal and elagitarian family. And patriarchal family is a family structure. It is not about the trace, uh, descent, uh, descent tracing. It is the family structure. It is a family structure in which authority is held by the eldest male. Eldest male. It is patriarchal family and matriarchal family. A patriarchal family, it is both of them. It is about the family structure. In this part, we have uh, we were talking about the descent tracing. It is about the family, the father's side, mother's side, both sides. But here in Arkal, we have about the architecture of the family. Patriarchal, it is architecture of father's family, architecture of uh, family by father, or matriarchal, it is architecture of family by mother, and also egalitarian family, both sides. We are talking about the structure, architecture of authority in the family. In patriarchal family, we have a family structure, we have a family um, architecture in which authority is, the hel is held by the eldest male. In opposite, a matriarchal family is a family structure in which authority is held by the eldest female. And in elagilitarian family is a family structure in which both parents share power and authority equally. It is very important. It is very important. All the struggles in a family is a type of power struggle. All the struggles, all the fights, all the problems, all the conflicts is a type of power struggle. So power supply, the source of power in a family, it is very important to be known and to be fair. To be fair is very important. Why? Because in a lot of families, authority become dictatorship with no fair attitude to all the family members or very weak or very powerful. So in family structure, in architecture of the family, we have three categorization. One, patriarchal, Arcal, architecture, 
to matriarchal. It is maternal structure. The maternal structure for authority. It is maternal authority with the uh, eldest female. And a Lagitarian family is both uh, equal by both uh, parents, mother and father about power and authority. And patriarchal. Patriarchal, it is about the location. Location of father, location of mother, and neolocal. It is about the local is location. It is the custom. Patriarchal residence refers to the custom of a married couple living in the same household or community as the husband's parents. Patriarchal, patrilineal, patriarchal, patrilocal. Patrilineal, decentralizing, patriarchal, family structure, or authority position, a power holder, and patriarchal, it is about the household, with the new family. Live in the same household of the husband, it is patriarchal resident. And a matrilocal resident refers to the custom of a married couple living in the same household or community as the wife's parents. For example, your father comes to the your to your mother city of born from the beginning days of the marriage. This residency is called metrolocal residence. And the neolocal residence is the custom of location of married couple not in the uh, husband's uh, original family household or not in the wife's residence is the custom of married couple living in their own residence apart from both the husband's and the wife's parents. Okay. So, repeat again. We have patrilineal about descent tracing, lineal, line, descent in the same line, line of family, patrilineal, matrilineal, and bilateral. It is about the descent tracing, descent line, line of family. And after that, it is patriarchal, it is uh, architecture of family. Uh, family structure about the authority about the house uh, about the power holding it is patriarchal and matriarchal and egalitarian family and finally about the custom about the family location from the uh, first years and first days of family shaping and family forming it is patriarchal matrilocal and neolocal okay Another word you should know here, it is endogamy and exogamy. What is endogamy? Endogamy is the practice of marrying within one's own group. One's own group. For example, uh, with other male or female in your tribe in your culture, in your ethnicity, in your other of your uh, everybody except of your siblings or your mother or father, original family members. It is endogamy. Endogamy is the practice of marrying within one's own group. It is endo, internal, and exo is outside, not inside. Exogamy gummy is the first cell that will shape in marriage for reproducing a baby it is called gummy before this we talk about polygamy and monogamy okay and we are uh, we are talking about endogamy the gamut will shape inside both uh, people wives and hu husbands are from the same tribe, from the same descent, from the same family members, uh, extended family me members. And exogamy outside of one's own group, the practice of marrying outside one's own group, which is endogamy. And exogamy, genetically, endogamy is very dangerous, very, very dangerous in exogamy. Sometimes uh, it is very uh, hard. Uh, very dangerous endogamy uh, from the genetic approach because we will see a lot of disabled people here, disabled baby here. 
Finally, we have topic so-called sociology of family. The sociology of family is the subdiscipline of sociology that attempts to describe and explain patterns of family life and variations in family structure. When you are talking about the science, when we are talking about the academy, when we are talking about the university, we are talking about four features. One, description. Two, explanation. Three, prediction. Four, control. Every field, every major field of science should have these four features. It should describe everything in this field. And after that, based upon the description, talking about the cause and effect, about the explanation, and after that, say with present observation, what are predictions, what are our predictions for the future, it is prediction, and four, based upon the description, explanation, and prediction, what can we do now and in the future parts of that major field of science? So these are the main features of every aspect of science. Description, explanation, prediction, and control. Also, we are talking about the sociology as a science of systematic studying and scientific studying of society, 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 human societies, and social behavior. So we are talking about description, explanation, prediction and control. In this part we are we have an interdisciplinary subdiscipline of sociology or interdisciplinary between family science, family related sciences like psychology, like family therapy, like um, family science, family studies, and sociology. Uh, okay, we have four approach for major approach in sociology when we are talking about the sociology of the family we are talking about the family from the four main aspects of sociology at first functionalist according to functionalist families serve four key functions we shape we form family we marry together at the perspective with the perspective of functionalist for key functions what are the functions of everything? It is the functionalist approach in sociology. One, sexual regula regulation. Two, socialization. Three, economic and psychological support. And four, provision of social status. Provision of social status. These are the main four functions that functionalist approach, functionalist perspective to society are giving us a supplying to the science of human societies, to sociology. We marry together, we shape family because of sexual regulation. We marry together, we form our family because of socialization for us, for children for entering a new stage of personal life, individual life, social life as a family member. Before that, we are good persons, we are good citizens, but we are not family members. We are not fathers, we are not fathers, mothers, we are not parents and spouse. And economic and psychological support, you are not alone and you have a good economic safety for present moment and also for future and provision of social status. Your social status will be different as a family member, not as a single person. The second one is conflict theories. They say that uh, families are factory environment, social class conflict, and feminist perspective focus on patriarchy. Feminist factory says women are dominated by men in the home in the same manner, the workers are dominated by the capitalists and managers in the factories. In the one, one of the major theoretical conflicts about the sociology of family that is that men are family factory owners, the family is a factory, and 
We have owners and workers. We have managers and working class people. Like also. It is like managers. It is like working class. And it is only about the conflict perspective and the sociology of the family. That finally women are dominated by men in the home. In the same manner that workers are dominated by capitalists and managers in the factories. Second approach is social class conflict. The exploitation of the lower classes by the upper classes contributes to family problems, such as high rates of divorce and overall family instability. It is something like social class conflict inside an internal family. And finally, feminist perspective focus on patriarchy. Men's domination over women existed long before capitalism and private ownership of property. It is um, looking at family from the feminist approach, uh, like a biological and historical, before shaping the factories, before shaping the uh, industrialized country and industrialization it is very 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 long term ago before the modern life feminists talk about the patriarchy symbolic interactions symbolic interactions explain family relationships in terms of the subjective meanings and everyday interpretation that people give their lives it is very important it is meaning production. Family is a source of meaning production in symbolic interactions. Modify or adopt roles to expectation of others. So, in symbolic interactions, uh, attitude and perspective to the family, we are talking about the hidden meaning and background meaning and contextual meaning of our interactions in the society and the one of the first units of society so-called family in the field of sociology of the family we look at these families at the location for a different shape and different part of inter-society and social interactions and what are the functions of this interaction it is adopt or modify the roles uh, to the expectation of others and postmodernism is something different for every aspect to the sociology, also in psychology, in art, in history, postmodernism view the family as diverse and fragmented, different parts and very, very, very uh, diverse part of the society. We have some concept, quick review that we know about the functionalist, conflict feminist, symbolic interactions and postmodernism in postmodern societies, families are diverse and fragmented boundaries between workplace and home are blurred and family problems are related to cyberspace such a new and powerful and modern aspects of family in postmodernist aspect to family postmodernist review and uh, perspective to family that family problems are related to cyberspace consumerism and the hyper real in an age incredibly characterized by high techs, haves and haves not. It is very important. It is fantastic. I love the postmodernist approach to everything, especially in human science, especially in psychology and in sociology. It's very real, very, very real. It says family problems are related to cyberspace, consumerism, and hyper real in an age increasingly characterized by high tech haves and haves not. It is the must and must not. Okay. It has got permeability of families and family dynamics and family as sources uh, of conflict and social inequality. In symbolic interactions, we are uh, talking about family dynamics, including communication patterns and the subjective meanings that people assign to events. It is very important. It is symbolic interactions. We are talking about the interpretation. We are talking about the subjective meaning, subjective interpretation, and sometimes um, subjective translation 
internal transition of the external events. It is the part of symbolic interactions. And in conflict and uh, feminist approach, we see family as sources of conflict and social inequality. Family both meter and help perpetuate social inequalities based on class and gender. And basically, in functionalist approach, we have a role of families in maintaining the stability of society and individuals. Well-being is very basic, old, and sometimes also, even in modern time, it is true. But I think permeability of families and postmodern approaches is very important and very efficient approach and perspective to family. Developing intimate relationships and establishing families. The United States has been described as a nation of lovers. It has been said that we are in love with love. We are in love with love. We are a nation of lovers. Congratulations, the nation of lovers and the nation are in love with love. Cohabitation refers to two people who live together at first and think of themselves as a couple too without being legally married. So the main topic, the main difference between cohabitation and marriage is legally recognized and legally re registers. Live together and think as a couple not only live together is cohabitation it is important it is basic it is necessary to think of themselves as a couple but we without legally married some people view cohabitation as a form of trial marriage before marriage we are trying that we are proper together appropriate together or not sometimes also sometimes it is not it is something like marriage without legally registration. Domestic partnerships are households in which an unmarried couple lives together in a committed, sexually intimate relationships and is granted some of the same rights and benefits as those occurred to married heterosexual couples. We talk about the homosexual couples and heterosexual couples. It is domestic partnership. Again, homogamy dual earner marriages and second shift. Homogamy, the pattern of individuals marries those who have similar characteristics such as race, ethnicity, religious background, age, education, or social class. It is homogamy. Monogamy, endogamy, exogamy, monogamy, polygamy, and homogamy. The pattern of individual homo is the meaning of similar and same. Homo in Latin is meant uh, similar. Similarities is homo. And same also. So homogamy. The pattern of individuals marrying those who have similar characteristics such as race, ethnicity, religious background, age, education, or social class. Some years ago, for example, 30 years ago, we were talking about more race and ethnical part and especially religious background but now age education and social class also is very important to describe homogamy it is very important people or homogamous people to uh, live and to marry someone with the same social class with the same educational levels with the same age status and uh, before that it was very important to race ethnicity and religious background now Asian education and social class is also very important. Dual earner managers, managers in which both spouses are in the labor force. Both of them work and are in labor force. But second shift, the domestic work that employed women perform at the home after they complete their work on the job. It is a second shift. The domestic work that employed women perform at home after they complete their work day on the job. It is second shift. Especially in this part of the studies, we use second shift for the work of women at home, not as a um, as a mother or as, as a wife. It is a second shift of work, paying, paying money. They are paid, but the work location is at home. And to all earner marriages, we talk about you know, also second shift. We can see here juggling housework, childcare, 
and the job in a paid workers is all part of the average data of many women. Why does sociologist Ali Hasho believe that many women work a second shift? Why? You can study about it. And child free versus childless. Those who decide, decide not to have children often consider themselves to be child free, whereas who don't produce children through no choice of their own may consider themselves childless. It is very important. If you have the biological, you and your partner have and own the biological features to have a child, and you decide on yourself not to have a child, you are child free. But if you, you don't have any ability to have a uh, natural ability to have children, both sides, women, men, or both of them, you are not called child free, you are called childless. Adoption used in America it is also uh, used for uh, animal adoption, dog adoption. Adoption is a legal process at first, it is legal through which the rights and duties of parenting are transferred from a child's biological and or legal partners to a new legal parent or parents. Okay, so what are the key words of adoption? At first, it is a legal process. It is not uh, inter-tribal or interracial or inter-ethnical uh, process. It is a legal process. And honestly, it is a process. It's a long time process in all countries of the world. Adoption is long because uh, for guarantee uh, the rights of that new, ch new child, it is very important legally that government and the other legal parts of uh, organization related to adoption uh, can study the uh, ability of new parents to uh, supply the demands of the uh, new child. So it is a legal process through which the rights and duty, two keywords, rights and duty, it is legally rights and duty of parenting from a biological or legal to a new legal. Biological, the first, the real and legal, the previous uh, parents to new legal parent or parents. Why we say uh, parent? Because a lot of people don't like to uh, to get married, but they want to have a child. So they are not parents, they are parents. They are not parents, they are not two people, they are one people. One woman want to have, wants to have a child, okay? But uh, she doesn't like to get married, okay? She goes to the legal part and says, yes, I want to adopt a child. It is parent, not parents. Teenage childbearing, it is one of the greatest problems all around the world, especially in the U.S., the primary reasons for the high rates of teenage pregnancy. One, many sexual active teenagers do not use contraceptives. Two, teenagers, especially those from low-income families and or subordinate racial and ethnic groups, may receive little accurate information about the use of and problems associated with contraception. So we can see again here the effect of social class on the information, consciousness raising, awareness raising about the self-protection procedure, especially for example for sex uh, it includes the contraceptions. And some teenage males believe that females should be responsible for contraception. This is very hard and very important and very unfair that you are together, you have sex together, and very uh, pleasant experience, a very good, very intimate relationship, but the responsibility of contraception is only with uh, one uh, partner, it is not fair. But a lot of teenage males believe that females should be responsible for contraceptions, and finally some teenagers view pregnancy as a sign of male prowess, or as a way to gain adult status. They love to be pregnant. Why? Welcome to the world of adulthood. It is a catastrophe for a teenager to have a child. Uh, it can uh, destroy all his or her 
future development and future growth. It is not catastrophic, but it's a hard position, very, very hard position. So it is very logical and very wisely to educate teenagers about the contraceptions. Single parent households, what are the challenges? We have two parent households and remaining single. There's a significant increase in single or one parent household due to the divorce and to birth outside of marriage. Single parents maintain 25% of U.S. households where they live with their own children under the age of 18. Two parents household, wow, so crowded family. Two parent households. Mothers and fathers in single parent household are confronted with the necessity of meeting most of their children's daily needs without help from others. However, even in two parents household, children are not guaranteed a happy childhood simply because both parents live in the same household. Living with your parents, biological parents, does not guarantee your happiness. Does not guarantee your happiness. Another part is remaining single. Reasons for remaining single. One, opportunities for a career, especially for women. It's very important for them to have a progression, to have a very uh, good job in the future. So, stay single. The availability of sexual partners without marriage, which is very available for a lot of people to have sexual partner without legal marriage. Also, we don't have any legal, illegal marriage. When you are talking about the marriage, you are talking about the legal registration. The belief that the single lifestyle is full of excitement. Wow, wow, happy time. A lot of people think that the single lifestyle is full of excitement and desire for self-sufficiency and freedom to change and experiment. These are the major four single parents household challenges and reasons. And the last part is family violence or domestic violence. Violence between men and women in the home is often called spouse abuse or domestic violence. Spouse abuse refers to any intentional act. The first keyword is intentional. It is not accidental. It is intentional act or series of acts, whether physical, emotional, or sexual, that causes injury to a female or male spouse. So, in abuse, in violence, in the family, family violence, we have these keywords. At first, it should be intentional. Second, it causes injury. Any type of intentional act, whether physical, emotional, sexual, and it should uh, end to injury. It is an important indicator that child abuse and neglect are also taking place in the household. In the household of the, uh, that taking place, violence taking place. Okay. Foster care okay, institutional setting or residences where adults other than a child's own parents or biological relatives serve as a caregiver. So, at first, it is institutional, it is legal, it is based upon the organizational, institutional, or residence, where adults, not your father, not your mother, it is foster care for children. Many foster children have been in dysfunctional homes where parents or other relatives lack the ability to meet the children's daily needs. It is foster children and foster care. The intent of such program is that the children will either return to their own families or be adopted by other families. Foster care is often not the case for difficult to place children. It is not good for difficult to place children or, as we say in psychology, difficult children and children with illness or disabilities. The foster care pro location is not for children with illness or disabilities and elder perceived as suffering from behavioral problems. Children perceived as suffering from behavioral problems. So, foster care setting is a setting, institutional setting or residency for the children 
that doesn't a good situation in their family for their daily life needs. After going to foster setting or foster case setting, we have two goals. At first, going back with modifying, with changing, with making better the household, the family, basic family household uh, situations. It's better. Yes. No, adopting by other, uh, other uh, qualified and eligible adults as a new baby, as a new children, adopted, adopted children. So it is not for, for example, children with mental problems, children with disability, behavioral problems, or difficult to place and other parts. It is foster care setting, foster care setting. And the last part before divorce, we are talking about the elder abuse, about the old people, elder abuse refers to physical abuse, psychological abuse, or financial exploitation, and medical abuse or neglect of page of uh, people age 65 or older. Most of the victims are age 75 to 85, who suffer some form of impairment. Sons followed by the daughters are the most frequent abusers of older persons. Why elder abuse? One, ageism. What is ageism? Prejudice and discrimination against people on the basis of age. Prejudice and discrimination against people on the basis of age. Two, the physical impairment of some elderly person. These are the major causes of elder abuse. There is no support for the common assumption that elderly persons who are dependent on their children are more likely to be abused. There is no socially and scientific support, no evidence-based research about this uh, claim that uh, elderly persons who care, who are dependent on their children are more likely to be abused. No. To the contrary, the abuses are very likely to be dependent on the older person for housing and financial assistance. So, there is a mutual dependency. No, it is a codependency from the side of the abusers to the um, uh, old people, not from the side of the old people. Because the, you are old, you are rich, you have everything. I, as your son, I, as your family members, I am dependent to you. And I abuse you for meeting my needs, not for have some bad behavior intentionally to you. But finally, it is a bad and uh, sometimes very uh, traumatic and pathogenic behavior to the elder adults. And divorce causes and consequences. Divorce again is opposite of marriage and at the same direction of marriage. Divorce is also legal process of dissolving a marriage that allows former spouses to remarry if they choose. So the final cause of divorce is remarriage. Most divorces today are granted on the grounds of irreconcilable differences. What is the meaning? Meaning that there has been a breakdown of the marital relationships for which neither party is specifically blamed. We are not happy together. It is enough to make a marriage, make a marriage to the end stage. Irreconcilable differences. We have some differences that we cannot live together because of differences. There is no good summation of our differences to have a good atmosphere, family atmosphere. Under no fault divert laws, however, proof of blameworthiness is generally no longer necessary. No fault divorces. There is no uh, faulty action. There is no mistake. There is no crime. There is no guilt. There is no major mistake. Blameworthiness for going to divorce. It is not necessary for divorce because it is. It is called uh, in the terminology of uh, law. It is called no fault divorce. We are not happy. It's all enough and causes of divorce changes in social institutions such as religion and family social stigma associated with divorce has lessons it has a lot of and a high and heavy social stigma about the 
there was uh, there were a lot of social stigma about divorce in the previous decades in the previous uh, centuries. Now it has been it has been lessened. And this economic and emotional dependency among family members, especially in female side. Our grandma and your grandma also and the mother of grandma and, and ancestors, female ancestors were very economically and emotionally dependent to their, for example, husbands. Now we talk about it. A lot of women have more uh, are more money maker than their husbands so they are not dependent they love their husband but they are not dependent every time they were not so happy in their marriage so say goodbye to marriage and marriage at an early age when you marry so at the early age the risk of divorce is uh, going up a short acquaintanceship before marriage Disapproval of the marriage by relatives and friends is very important. They are not approved and accepted your marriage. They are sometimes rejected. Sometimes uh, they will uh, they will make a limited relationship with you as new family members as a couple. And it is sometimes a reason for uh, going a marriage to divorce. Limited economic resources and low wages, poverty, a high school education or less. Uh, more, 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 more educational level, less, 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 less rate of divorce. Uh, and parents who are divorced or have unhappy marriages, if you have a ground in a family that your parents are not so happy, it affects uh, on your uh, divorce rate. And finally, the presence of children, depending on their gender and age, at the start of the marriage negative consequences divorce may have a dramatic economic and emotional impact on family and some children experience more than one divorce during their childhood because one or both of their parents may remarry and subsequently divorce again um, positive consequences is divorce may an opportunity to terminate destructive relationship why not it may represent a means to achieve personal growth and finally others choose to remarry one or more times. I'm so happy to talk about the very basic, important, and interesting, and consciousness riser topics in this chapter. Please study the chapter uh, completely out of your course, out of your educational courses and academy. It is very important to know about these topics personally as an academic person. Uh, it will help you to solve and an analyze and solve your problems in details and very clear and sharply. Have a good time.